Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trail Pass. So this might be the ultimate trail machine. No, wait, wait, wait. Let's move over here. This might be the ultimate trail machine. So this is my new to me, it's actually a used model with less than 100 miles when I got it, but it's an Outlander 650 DPS. So in the Outlander lineup, this is more of a base model and with that 650 engine, it is now discontinued for the 2023 model lineup. Now, I know you can still get this engine in a couple of different ways. You can't actually still get this 650 in a six by six, but for the Outlander you see here, it is no longer available from Can-Am. But I did seek out this particular model for a reason. I really, really love the proven reliability of that 650 engine and just the overall smoothness. It has really, really good horsepower at 62 horsepower, more than enough for what I might need, but, uh, I really wasn't interested in moving up to the 850 or the 1000, and I've already had a 570 and a lot of seat time on different 570 models, so this is one that I was really interested to test. Now, like I said, this is the way it comes from the factory. This is a DPS model, which overall in the Can-Am lineup is a pretty basic machine. Uh, it's not an XTP or even an XT model, and uh, as such, it is a little bit less contented, but that gives us an opportunity to build this machine out to what I think might be the ultimate trail running machine, at least for my uses here in the uh, the western part of Virginia. So you've seen the kind of trails that we ride here on the channel. It is a mix of rocky, sand, and mud, really all the conditions here. Uh, and we have gone to Hatfield McCoys and again, some of the trails into West Virginia. And uh, overall, I think this is a great starting point for a ultimate trail riding four-wheeler. Now, you can see here, we do have a super winch already installed. I did this following the same procedure that I did, actually a different video on the channel. I actually installed a worn winch on an Outlander 450, but again, all of that is still the same basic principle if you wanna look that video up. Uh, it is a pretty straightforward process here on these Outlanders. Uh, now, let's get into what we're gonna to change to make this into my dream trail running machine. And uh, actually, let's start down here. So these are the factory 14 inch wheels that you might find on a DPS or an XT model Outlander. And they do come with a 26 inch ITP Terracross tire. Overall, this is an excellent setup, especially for a more basic model machine, but there are still a couple things I don't like. Now, the ITP Terracross tires are excellent for the kind of trails that I run, but you can see here when you look at the side profile of the wheel and tire, there's not a whole lot of sidewall poke. Now, what that normally does is when you have more sidewall and when it pokes out farther uh, than the face of the wheel itself, it kind of protects your wheels a little bit. Now, again, this setup does look really nice and would perform really nice, but I'm really concerned about rock rash and uh, tearing up these super premium looking wheels and tires. So we're gonna go ahead and rip these off the machine and put a different setup that you might be familiar with if you've been watching the channel. So again, really applaud Can-Am for making this setup and it would be good for maybe some different uh, terrain. And honestly, it'd be good for my terrain, but I'm just way too scared to scratch up these wheels and tires. They're way too nice looking. And uh, I think I can improve this setup a little bit. Now moving on to some of the other things that we're gonna install on this channel. So a few accessories you may have already seen. We do have a Mad Dog seat cover. We do actually have the Can-Am branded rear view mirror, some Kimimoto hand guards, and the Can-Am link basket. But what you're probably tuned into this video for is we're gonna install the Expedition Series front and rear bumpers. So again, a good reason to buy a basic model machine if you wanna start changing around bumpers and the like. If I would have an XT model, it would already have the XT bumpers, but I think these Expedition bumpers are gonna look really, really slick. So we'll get those installed today. We're also gonna look at this ATV front bag from Cabela's. Uh, I haven't seen anybody really run these on the trails, but it does look like a pretty slick setup and we'll get all of that installed today to turn this basic model Can-Am Outlander DPS 650 into what I think might be the best overall trail running machine for my uses. So stay tuned. So through the magic of editing, you can see the new wheel and tire setup. So these wheels actually came off of an older Outlander and the tires you may have seen, I ran on my Kodiak 700. So these are a Tusk tire. They are the Trilobite tread pattern, which is basically a big horn knockoff. And these have been super tough tires. These are not the HD model, but I do really, really like the setup. So 
Moving on to the bumper install. So Can-Am has a really neat website where you can actually look up the part number that you might be installing and you can pull up all the directions then from there. And they actually have templates and everything else you can print out. So we have the template already installed right underneath the winch. We need to drill two holes which will pop out in some pre-drilled spots right here which sits in front of your winch if you already have your winch installed. So now we got the front end buttoned up. So it has a total of four bolts down here, one holding on this extra bracket, and then to the actual machine itself where we drilled the holes, and then we actually have two separate bolts that hold the bumper itself on. Now moving up here, we do reuse the bolts here that go into the front rack, and I'm assuming if you had an XT bumper, it would reuse those same bolt holes. Interestingly enough, not only does this bumper work for the G2 chassis, the full-size 650 through 1000 Outlanders, but it also works with the 450 and 570, the Outlander L models as well. So really cool look. I really like the look of this Expedition bumper. And I also like that it adds extra protection down here around the winch as well. So just like we did here for the rear, we go on to the Can-Am BRP installation instructions website, type in the number right there, and we can pull up the Expedition rear bumper installation instructions. So go ahead and get started. Now, one thing to keep in mind that I did not keep in mind and actually didn't even realize it until we got to this part of the install, but if you have an Outlander DPS like this one and you don't have the factory XT bumpers or any other sort of bumper, you're actually missing a bracket that bolts in right under here. So looking at the directions again now, the bracket is here in blue. We can scroll up here. Again, I don't have those, but it's the P3 and P4, and you can see the part numbers right there as well. But uh, definitely look up these directions and read through them a little bit. Uh, don't do what I did, because you get to this part of the install, which is uh, basically not even started, but out of the box, and you'll be a little bit disappointed. So now we're gonna be on hold here for a week or so until the parts come in, but we'll resume this video as soon as we can. So what was a few seconds to you guys has been a few weeks here in reality, but we do have both of these brackets now and they are the part numbers, the seven number, 705. Uh, but you do need both of those brackets if your machine does not have any bumpers from the factory, but they ultimately live right up under here. And we'll go ahead and get all of that taken off. And uh, I think we have to remove the rear rack here and we'll get these new rear bumpers bolted up. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these three bolts right here above this computer or whatever it is. Uh, they're all 10 millimeter, we'll get those loosened up and out of the way. Then we're gonna reuse the same hardware with the bracket. So here's a look at both brackets installed. There's the one on the right side of the machine, moving around here to the left, and that lives right there as well. So now, both of those out of the way, we do have to remove at least the bolts holding in that rear rack to get in another bracket, and we'll go ahead and get those installed now. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove this nut here and this nut right here. They're both 13 millimeter, and it looks like we do that on both sides, the rack should come right off. So just kind of mocking it up, we don't have any of the bolts in it or anything else, but we do have these brackets laying right on top here. And you can see the bracket lays on top and it has a slight curve to the outside of the machine. And it lays right on top of those side brackets we just put on. So now we'll get all the hardware in it, get the rack back on and tighten everything back up. So here's what it looks like all put together. Just to be upfront with you guys, we do not have the back rack tightened yet. Uh, we're deviating a little bit from the instructions manual on this part, but we wanna make sure we can get all these other bolts uh, lined up, tightened up, uh, and everything goes together before we get everything completely snugged up there with the rack. So the two different types of hardware we're gonna use, we have a T45 size Torx bolt with a 13 millimeter on the bottom. That's gonna go right up here on top on both sides. We also have a carriage bolt, you can see right here, and that has a 10 millimeter on the bottom. And that's gonna line up with these square holes, both from the top and through the side there on the rear mounting points. So 
So here's the finished look at both bumpers. You already saw kind of a walk around of the front bumper, but with these Expedition bumpers, they do have kind of a different look than the XT bumpers. They do have some extra uh, bracing and everything else. Um, and they also aren't round tube. They're kind of this flat tube design. I think it looks really, really nice here with the back end of the Outlander. And it does wrap around the rear of the machine in a pretty nice fashion. Now, one thing that might seem a little bit awkward here is it does have a missing bar that goes right back here. And actually we do have that missing bar. I'll show it to you here in a second. But on the rear of these larger G2 Outlanders, you do have your trunk and it just clears with that bar missing. Now, what's really interesting, once you get that closed, there it is. What's really interesting about both of these bumpers is they're actually available for the 650 and larger as well as the Outlander L models, the 450 and the 570. And if you did have an Outlander L model, you actually get this extra little piece of bumper that comes with the kit, but I can't use it on mine. And what that would do is that bolts in into that missing gap. So again, if you had one of those smaller Outlanders, that would bolt in just like that. It would protect the whole rear of your machine, which I think looks really cool. However, we would have to do some modifications for this to fit on mine, and we would also lose uh, the ability of that rear trunk. So probably leave it out for now, but it is really interesting. Plus, you basically get this whole extra little bumper if you're installing on one of the larger Outlanders. So if you have a friend with a 450 or 570, uh, they'd probably really like you if you donate that to them. So anyhow, we have all the bumpers and the wheels and tires wrapped up now. So let's move on to the accessories. So we'll go ahead and start with these Kimimoto hand warmers. And interestingly enough, they do have a Velcro piece right here for the mirror, which we're gonna install next. So we'll go ahead and slide these over, cinch it up with the drawstring, and we'll wrap up these cords. Now the mirror, actually is a Can-Am part number, and it goes right into the threaded piece right outside of your brake reservoir. So we'll go ahead and put that in. See, it just has the threads there on the bottom of it, and we'll spin it right on. Now our last two accessories, we do have this Cabela's ATV front bag and the Can-Am basket. And what's really cool about this basket is it actually fits the link connector points for either the front or the rear rack. And uh, actually, I think for my purposes, I would rather run the bag on the rear and the basket on the front. That way, if I have my chainsaw or anything like that, I can keep a better eye on it when I'm going down the trail. So we have all the modifications here onto the Outlander, and I think it turned out really, really nice. You can see we have the winch, the Expedition front bumper, the Can-Am branded basket. We have a new set of, or new to this machine set, of 12-inch wheels now with 26-inch tires. We have the Kimimoto hand warmers and the Can-Am branded rear mirror. We also have the Expedition rear bumper and the Cabela's ATV front bag, but again, we're running it here on the rear. And I actually really like this bag. I haven't seen too many people running this thing yet, um, but we found it on the Cabela's website. My dad actually ordered one and I uh, liked it so much, had to get one for myself as well. So it does have these gear straps, which are really nice if you have some longer items, like maybe an ax or a firearm that you're looking to hunt with. You can also open it up and the whole inside is orange, which I really, really like. Makes finding anything you might have in there really easy. It does have a little bit of a frame. You can see it has this uh, metal bar here. It does have a divider that you can put down in the middle. That all just is up with Velcro. Uh, but it does just strap right on, really, really nifty. And actually, right up here, you can open this up, and that's actually a rain fly. So similar to what you might have on a tent, it just stretches right over and uh, would keep 
your bag extra dry or extra out of the dust uh, if you're running on a really dry day. So I really, really like that. Um, but overall, I think this build really turned out nice. So for the trails that we run on the East Coast, I, I guess this might be kind of a mild build. But again, those East Coast trails are what I predominantly run. It is a mix of mud, rock, sand, uh, maybe some creek crossings, that sort of thing. And I think this machine should do excellent uh, in all of that different types of terrain. And I can't wait to get it out on the trail. So if I really hope this video helped you. If you are interested in a winch install, again, I did do a very similar install on an Outlander 450. You can definitely check out that video. But overall, I think this is a pretty big transformation for this machine, and I'm really, really happy with it. What turned out or started out rather as basically a base model 650 DPS is now fully optioned to the way I like it. And honestly, I did it for uh, no more or no less really than the price of an XT. So uh, definitely just kind of whichever way you want to go about it, um, whether you want to get it fully kitted out from the showroom floor or whether you want to do all of that yourself. Now, I will say, and you might have been able to see, the front bumper was a super easy install. The rear bumper was pretty difficult, but it was more based on just installing all those brackets. If you had already have XT bumpers on a machine and you're going to upgrade to the Expedition bumpers, uh, I don't think it would be near that bad. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it did help you out. If it did, please consider subscribing and dropping a like and a comment down in the comment section. Can't wait to hear what you think of this Can-Am Outlander build. So thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, another great use for this Can-Am front basket is actually another product I found on Amazon, not related to Can-Am at all, but it is an earth pack. It's a big dry bag, duffel bag, and actually the way it closes up with these, the roll top and the clips actually fits perfectly in the Can-Am basket. So if you want even more dry storage, and that would be completely dry storage since it's in that dry bag, this is a really good solution. And it does stay pretty well in the, the basket. Uh, occasionally, if I know I'm gonna be hitting some super rough trails, I will put a couple more bungee cords over it. But overall, just the way it sits and just the end pieces tying it to the basket, that's the way I like to run it. And that has been a really good option for me as well for some of those longer trips.